Recently, I made a video about how I was switching away from DWM and into i3 Window Manager, and I talked in that video about my reasons why, and some of that had to do with the bar, some of it had to do with just general interest in trying something different after over a year, maybe even two years, of using DWM. And now I've been using i3 for a couple weeks, and I've gotten my workflow down to a very well-oiled machine. And I have to say, I'm loving i3 again. I had forgotten how awesome i3 truly is. Now, the question of whether or not i3 is better than DWM or whether DWM is better than i3 is a question for another day. I can't, I don't think I could really choose a favorite between the two. They're both really good. But the point is, is that I've gotten my i3 window manager workflow down to a point where it's just really satisfying. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit today. So let's go ahead and take a look at what my i3 setup actually looks like. So this is my i3 setup. And as you can tell, there's not a lot of special here. It's what most of my window managers actually look like. The difference is here is I've tried a few different things in the bar. Like I've had some stuff there in the center, which I don't normally do. So, you know, whatever. It's not as if I'm highly productive because my weather's in the center instead of off to the side. Maybe I am a tad bit more productive. Who knows because of that? I mean, we'd have to ask somebody else, uh, whatever. The point is, is that for the most part, this is what the setup looks like. Now, most of my time during the day is actually spent inside the terminal using Vim to write. Now, that is a big change from my last workflow video because before, most of my work took place in LibreOffice and Google Docs. Now, I'm still forced to use Google Docs quite a lot. Unfortunately, that's just the way work goes. You use what is kind of forced upon you. But the point is, is that when I'm actually able to use my own software, I've been using Vim. Now, I've made several videos about writing in Vim, and I'm sure I'll make a few more. But this is where I spend most of my time. And for the last week or so, I've been doing this blur thing, as you can see. Usually, it's just tran transparency. This time, I've decided to go for the whole blur effect. I have to say, I'm kind of liking it. It doesn't necessarily lend itself to low-end devices, but... I don't have a low-end computer, so I don't really care all that much. When I'm not here, I'm actually in Firefox, and that's what this looks like. I have my own user chrome.css, so if you're interested in getting your version of Firefox to look like mine, you can find my user chrome.css in my dot .files, and you can find a couple videos that I've made in the past, which I'll link in the video description below if I remember, uh, on how to actually do this. So those are the two applications that I spend most of my time in. Now, in terms of i3 itself, the thing that I love the most and the thing that I've found myself enjoying the most is the fact that you can have key bindings for every single workspace you have. So right now, I have 20 workspaces. I know what you're thinking. Matt, no one needs 20 workspaces. Well, F you, I need 20 workspaces. I use them. I really do. So right now, as you can see, I have 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, and 8 on this machine. On, or on this monitor, on that one I have 10, 12, 16, 18, and 19. So I'm not having, they're not always all in use. But I like spreading my applications out, and I like to have dedicated workspaces for specific tasks, and that's why I use so many workspaces. And with i3, the fact that I can go through and define a key binding for every single workspace is awesome. It's not something you can do in, I, in DWM, at least not easily. I've never been able to find an actual way of doing it well. So, for example, on this monitor here, I can do super and then the number in order to switch to a certain workspace. So, if I wanted to go to workspace 3, I could do super 3. On the other monitor, if I wanted to go to workspace 13, I'd do super alt and 3 in order to go to workspace 13. And then I can throw in the shift modifier to those already established key bindings to move a client from one workspace to another. So I can actually move this one here to whatever workspace I want, just adding the shift key to the already established key bindings. For me, if I were to ever switch back to DWM, that would be the feature right there that I would miss the most because it's not as if switching to a different tag on a different monitor in DWM is hard. Like it's not hard, but it does add an extra key binding. So for example, if I, w if I had the focus on my first monitor here and I wanted to go to workspace nine, on the second works on the second monitor I'd have to first change focus from this monitor to that monitor and then do a super 
uh, number in order to actually go to that particular tag. It's an extra key binding. And while that's not a big deal, I got used to it, it's definitely not as easy as having a dedicated key binding to go to Workspace 9 on this monitor, or 19 on this monitor. So that's the best thing about i3 that I've discovered so far. And not really discovered, I had this set up before, but it's rediscovered, I should say. The other thing is the configuration file. So if I actually go to my repo here and go to i3 and go to my configuration file, you'll see that this configuration file, if I move my head out of the way, is 70 lines long. 70 lines long. And that's the entire configuration file. Now obviously there's more stuff that goes to it. Right, there's more things that have to go along with it in order for i3 to actually function. But all said and done, this configuration file is 70 lines long. And it actually would be a lot shorter if I got rid of these variable de definitions and if I used fewer workspaces. If I only used like five workspaces, I could get this way down, way, f you know, further. But that's never going to happen. I'm always going to use a lot of workspaces. So that's my configuration file down to just 70 lines. Now, you have to be asking, Matt, how'd you get it down to 70 lines? Where are all your freaking key bindings? Matt, where are your key bindings? Now, these are the only key bindings that I have in the configuration file, and that's the only reason why I have that those three key bindings here is because if you delete those, i3 won't load. I don't know why you delete those, i3 just crashes. So where are my key bindings? Well, my key bindings are in SXHKD. So I, at here at the bottom, I have an auto start file. So, if I go up to our auto start file, you'll see that I'm actually starting SXHKD. And if we go to this file here, like this, you'll see that all of my key bindings are actually right here. These are all my application key bindings some, with some really cool uh, key cords. For those who are nerds like me and want to use key cords, you can do that in S SXHKD. It, this does all my stuff for Rofi and stuff like that, you, and my volume controls and all that stuff. And if I scroll all the way down here to the bottom, we'll see all of my i3 key bindings. So, this one here moves the focus from one point to another. This one here moves windows from one point to another. Uh, this one here changes the spawn mode from vertical to horizontal mode. This one here is the full screen toggle and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I like having all my key bindings in SXHKD for multiple reasons. First, for whatever reason, I have a obsession with keeping that i3 configuration file below 100 lines. I think it's because I used the Arco Linux i3 configuration file for a long time, and if you've ever used that, that thing's like 2,000 lines long. It's ridiculous. I just realized that you probably can't actually see what I was talking about, but you can actually see the, see the stuff now. But um, the point is, is that one of the reasons why I like this is because that Arco Linux one was so long, it kind of turned me off from really long i3 config files. Um, but also, I like this because you can go through and do things like this, where instead of having to go through and list out each and every single key binding, you can just go through and kind of create this formula where it will associate what's inside these brackets what's with what's inside these brackets. And that means you don't have to go through and over and over again list this one particular command for each and every key binding that you need. That's really cool. Also, adding in that you can do key chords, which is something you can't do very easily at least, with i3. You'd have to use modes, I believe, in order to do something like key chords in the standard i3 config. So those are my key bindings and such. Now... Outside of that, I don't think that there's much to talk about. The only thing that I found myself missing is scratch pads. Now, there is a built-in functionality for scratch pads in i3, so you don't have to get into the comments and say, hey, Matt, there's scratch pads in i3. I'm aware of this, but they're not the same as DWM. Like, the patch that you can use in DWM in order to get scratch, scratch pads allows you to create multiple scratch pads, and it's really easy to set up. And while you can do it with i3, I found that it's a kind of a tedious process and it doesn't always work. It's really suited towards just one scratch pad or with sending other applications to a scratch pad workspace. I'm going to continue to play around with it to try to see if I can go through and kind of get it to work for me. So far, I have not been successful on that. So hopefully I can go through and get that working so that actually... Uh, sues me because I really do miss my scratch pads. If I can't get that working, I might install something like Quake 
Quake or whatever the hell you call it, uh, which is the drop down terminal. I might do that. Or I could go through and install something like Tilda. Tilda does kind of does the same thing. But the only other thing that I've had a problem with is OBS. Now, when Tyler and I record the podcast every Thursday around 3 o'clock Eastern Time and stream it on YouTube, I have to go through and use OBS to capture the Discord window, is which is where we do the call. And for whatever reason, OBS does not like to capture the Discord call when Discord is not on a focused workspace. What it does is if I switch back to a different workspace and like Discord is in the background, like on, a, on like a different workspace, the video will actually freeze in OBS. I don't know why it does this. It's not specifically an i3 problem because it does happen on other window managers as well, but it's annoying because it means I have to keep Discord in focus all the time in order for me to actually record the podcast. I haven't noticed any other X window prob- capture problems other than that one. So it's not that big of a deal simply because I've gotten used to it, but it's definitely something that didn't happen in DWM. So those are my two uh, like negatives that I've come across in i3. Other than that, I've had a ball. Like I had completely forgotten how good i3 is. I miss a little bit the master stack layout that uh, DWM has, and I've consider going through and trying to replicate it here in i3 that's something that i still might do but i haven't missed it enough to you know like switch back or anything so so those are my basic thoughts on my switch so far to i3 whether or not i will do a long-term review of i3 like in a month or so i don't know yet if that's something that you want to see leave a comment in the comment section below i don't know whether or not that's something anybody would be interested in but if you are like i said go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below you can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Zach Knight from Tool, Steve A, Sabrick Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, Andy P, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter A, Crucible, Dark Bandit 6, Vlad A, and Primus. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.